almost okay okay folks so today we will study <clears throat> the most important encryption algorithm of course i would think is very important not the most important uh, that's called rsa it became very famous yeah, right <laughs> yeah please uh, mute yourself and also we'll study digital signature all right so so this is these are the contents we'll try to cover today we will not go into deep mathematics, <clears throat> but in general, look at the concepts. So we are almost towards the end of uh, crypto roadmap. Uh, we today uh, we will study RSA and digital signatures, and something we will left out is key management. We will be covered in the next class. Okay, so we have seen public key cryptography, uh, basic concepts, and see what we can. What in symmetric encryption setting, what we have seen is Alice and Bob, when they want to uh, send message to each other over insecure channel, right? They, uh, Alice can encrypt uh, using, uh, using what? The shared key, right? a message m using a key k which is shared key and bob has the same key okay the so bob can decrypt that cipher text receive cipher text with the same key the assumption here i would repeat this another time is that key has been sent reliably to other end and there is nobody is able to uh, nobody is able to manipulate the key in between, right? That, that was the assumption. Then we started, and there's a difficult problem to solve, and it remained very difficult problem for many decades. And then uh, you smart guys have come out with idea of the concept of asymmetric encryption, wherein, you know, this key transport problem is solved. Okay, right, and then we came across this concept of uh, in Diffie-Hellman, uh, we have looked at the way we can uh, create the key K at both ends by exchanging some parameters. So, so both, both have some private key and then public key and when sent using of each other's public key and own private key. Uh, common key can be arrived at, right? So Diffie-Hellman is very com important algorithm uh, that is being, that is used in many protocols, okay, all right? And now we are, uh, then we have studied a version of that that's called Algamal. Now, see Diffie-Hellman does not, one issue with Diffie-Hellman is that it, you can just get the keys at both ends. It means Alice and Bob can get the key by exchanging some private keys and so on, and we come out with the key. Now this key can be used in symmetry key setting. Okay, like we have uh, studied the, uh, you know, algorithms for symmetry key. All right, so, but you cannot, if you're using Diffie Hellman, you cannot take a message M and encrypt it and then send it to other end. That's not possible. The algamal was a minor modification over that, wherein, uh, of course, there is some exchange of parameters in the beginning, like uh, Bob sends public key to Alice, and Alice uses public key of Bob and her own private key to encrypt a message. Okay, so once this encrypted message goes to Bob, Bob uses uh, his own private key and Alice's public key and then can decrypt. Okay, now note that in, in even in Algamal, there's a concept when, when Alice is encrypting a message, she is using her private key as well. Okay, in addition to Bob's public key. Okay, however, uh, normally when you read, um, you know, literature about uh, 
uh, about this method asymmetric encryption normally they don't talk about you know alice's private key is also being used okay all right so when we look at in general about public key cryptography we say that each participant has to generate two keys public key and private key public key as we know is known to everyone private key is known only to the person now so both alice and bob are generating these two keys and keys always come in a pair what does it mean when you are generating private key simultaneously you will generate public key as well it means that these keys are not independent of each other there is a, of course mathematical relationship we have seen in case of diffie-hellman as well okay only then you can decrypt right otherwise the whole thing will not work okay all right so we have already seen this one so public key encryption in general we can say everyone can in, encrypt using receiver's public key okay here we don't mention the private key of alice when alice is sending something to bob let's assume this is bomb though it doesn't look like bomb uh, okay alice sending to bob all alice needs to do is that use bob's public key it means that somehow public key of bob must be available to alice okay now so anybody so now public key is public you know it's known to everyone so anybody can send a message using bob's public key it means that take a message m and use public key of bob say pk bob uh, public key is normally we show as this sk bob and use this and algorithm to encrypt this message that's a simple thing right okay so this method is as follows okay uh, now we are talking about rsa algorithm in general right where we will we have bob and alice now communication is between alice and bob alice wants to send something to bob she needs bob's key for that public key so bob let's assume the bob will send public key pk to alice assuming that alice doesn't know about public key of bob then alice uses this public key of bob okay to encrypt message m i'm sorry i think i uh, used uh, uh, here sk i should be pk okay uh, so all right so you get cipher text c c goes to other end and then bob uses uh, his own private key to decrypt c and get m simple and this uh, diagram we have already seen uh, same thing uh, being depicted here so this so now this method asymmetric encryption we can use for encryption for confidentiality and we can also use for authentication that's called digital signatures which will study today all right okay so basically public key encryption has three parts first is key generation uh, both if alice and bob are sending messages to each other then both will generate public key and private key and then encryption with recipients public key okay and then when recipient receives it then he will use his private key to decrypt the message okay just three steps and these are the properties we will skip the properties right but please go through it and i there will that i may ask some question based on this so now we come to last encryption algorithm that we are studying in this course is called rsa and i said mentioned earlier uh, I think these folks were from MIT, Rivesh, Shamir, and Edman. Uh, so all three of them came up with this algorithm uh, and became very famous. They started a company based on that and it's being used in multiple places and so on, right? Now it's again based on the same trapdoor one way function that we have said in case of hash. Okay. Uh, please go through it is easy to calculate in one direction but infeasible to calculate in another direction okay so basically inverse of a function is not possible 
now we can generalize it in terms of uh, uh, you know multiplication of two prime numbers is easy but factor factorize or making factors of that is difficult all right now this kind of function is important then the key length has got to be big okay all right so if the, the key length is big then complexity of the algorithm increase it means it's difficult to break okay. all right so if key size is large enough then the brute force method is we cannot break it using brute force method all right okay so now rsa is most often used for encryption of small piece of data for example key transport or digital signatures note that asymmetric key encryption is very complex and is very it means it takes a lot of time okay it's not as sim simple as as uh, easy as or less time consuming as symmetric key encryption so it means that if you have a large size of few terabytes or megabytes then you cannot use this method only for a small pieces of data you can use this method okay what does it mean then it means that now we can use it for very specific purpose like key transport which we have already seen in case of dplman or we we can do key transport using rsa as well or we have seen that we can do it with uh, lgamal in case of lgamal you just encrypt the uh, you know alice decides on uh, uh, symmetric key okay and then encrypt this with, uh, with uh, you know the method that's given in algamal using the boss public key and her own private key and then send it to the end okay so rsa encryption or in general symmetric uh, asymmetric encryption is not meant to replace symmetric ciphers because rsa is several times slower than symmetric cipher like aes or des or 3des okay so main use of this is securely exchange a key or do digital signatures now this method rsa is also based on modular mathematics arithmetic and here however we use rather than using exponential like we have taken parameter g and so on and then done experiment uh, exponentiation we use integer factorization problem so here the theory is that multiplying two large prime is computationally easy so given you have one prime say say 101 is a prime into 103 is also a prime right just check it up i mean i'm just is 101 prime Can you factor it? Yeah. Prime. Yeah. Okay. So doing this is easy. Whatever be the answer, right? Six digits, right? Whatever. Now, given this number, can you find out these two are the factors? Because there may be many such factors. If these numbers are very large. Now we are talking only about 101, but it is this number could be bit, uh, you know, as large as 2048 in this range, right? This size. It will have 2048 bytes, uh, bits. Okay. If this is one prime number and there is another prime number of same size, so then it, how difficult it is to find out the factors. It's not just one, you know, such combinations you will get, but millions of combinations, right? So it's very difficult to find out the factor. So that's the trick that's being used. So doing multiplication is easy, but doing from this, whatever the answer, getting this is hard. Okay, now let's look at the algorithm.
P and Q are two large prime numbers in the order of 1024 to 2048 bits. And now they, they are secret. Remember, you know, normally uh, algorithms, when you read, they don't talk about secret, assuming that you know it, but I have deliberately put it here. These are two secret large primes. Is secret to whom? Is secret to Alice? Alice will have two such numbers and Bob will also have two such numbers. Or the, these Alice will have different maybe and Bob will have different, right? So Alice may have P dash Q dash or Bob may have PQ. Okay, but these two are very large size prime. Each person will choose. Okay, then we define N capital N as P times Q. Okay, now this number has to be very large enough such that the message M that we are going to send has to be less than n. Note that we say that message is always a number. Okay, because everything in the computer is a, uh, can be is going to zeros and ones. So whatever like what whatever sentence you write or whatever plain text you have is finally a number. Number could be of a large size, that's all. Okay. All right. All right, and if we have very large message, then it can be broken and sent separately, of course. And then we define a phi function, this called Euler's phi function, which is called, which is P minus one into Q minus one. Okay, all right. Now you take this phi n or P minus one Q minus one and find out one, any E, which is relative prime to p minus 1 and q minus 1. We define rela uh, relative prime if the GCD or common uh, greatest common uh, uh, what is that? GCD greatest common divisor? Okay, between E and phi this phi n is 1. It means that if uh, if the greatest common divisor between E and P minus one Q minus one is just one. All right. So now this is a condition. So now you can pick up any E such that this condition is satisfied. So now E can be three, seventeen, whatever. It it could be very large number. Could be also very large number. Okay, now what becomes a public key? Public key is N and this E, that is a prime, uh, co-prime of P minus one Q one so that we have chosen. Okay, now we are announcing it to the world that this is our, or the Bob is announcing it to the world, this is the public key. N, E, N is P into Q and E is, Relative prime of P minus one Q minus one. So we have come out with public key. We will look at the example and become much simpler. But what is the Bob's private key? We define as a D and D is nothing but inverse of E. So, so E into D is equal to one mod P minus one and Q minus one. Now note that we are using a P minus one Q minus one, not N. Yes. Okay. So, so D becomes E inverse. Okay. So when we say so inverse of E mod E minus one Q minus one, and we know how to calculate inverse, right? We can use some algorithms for that. Okay. Now your question that may ask you is that D is a private key. Okay, E is public key. But why not Mallory in between find out by doing inverse function? Yeah, anyone?
D is private key to the Bob. Now E, N and E are being sent to everyone. Why can't Mallory calculate the value of D by inversing E? Just think about it now. What did we say? N is known to everyone, but P and Q are not known to everyone, right? So P minus one and Q minus one are not known to everyone, excepting to Bob. So if this is not known, then E inverse cannot be calculated. Because this E inverse is in relationship with P minus one, Q minus one. Because E and Q, P minus one, Q minus one are co-prime. Okay, all right. Now, this N and E comes to Alice from Bob. So Alice receives it, or it is available to her because it's public. She has a message M to send, which is less than N. Okay. So Ellipse now encrypts message M as simple as this, right? She takes message M and increases its power to E. E is this one, right? Which we found out, uh, we calculated earlier. Okay. And that's it. And she does mod it over N. Because N is also she receives uh, from, uh, because it's a public key. It from Bob, she received this, right? So she gets the cipher text. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, so, so Alice encrypts this and uh, creates cipher text. When Bob receives it, all he has, uh, he, he does is that he takes C, cipher text he has received, raise the power by D, and D is the private key, which is inverse of E, right? Here we uh, he has calculated right, and then he will get the answer, original message back. Does it look like magic? Please go through mathematics; it will become clear. Huh? So let's take one very trivial example. Or oh, before this, we will uh, before example. Let's look at the summary. First thing is, say Alice, uh, Bob, for example, picks up two large primes P and Q, computes n is equal to P and Q. Okay, uh, and the number of bits in N is usually between 2048 and 4096. So this is very, very large number, remember. Okay, if uh, you know, it will fill many such pages if you just write each one of these numbers. Okay, and then once he calculates this, uh, once he decides on P and Q, then he can choose, uh, find out uh, relative prime of P minus one, Q minus one. So now E and N becomes public key. And then he can calculate D, which is private key as E inverse of mod P minus one, Q minus one, right? So he will get, this is the private key of Bob. Okay, all right. So now encryption is to be done. Now that key generation, et cetera, are done by Bob. Then encryption is done by Alice, right? Alice will receive N and E from Bob and encrypt the message M. Using this method, take message M, which is a number, raise it to power of E and do mod of N. This becomes hypertext C. And when Bob, receive this C, he will use simple decryption algorithm and uh, using the key D and ciphertext C. So this, and he only does this simple calculation, right? Uh, this should be capital N. It should be C, he receives C this power by D, which is his private key, which becomes uh, M, E, D mod N. And finally it gives 
uh, equivalent to m okay all right yes yeah, so m e d is m uh, so please go through this set it's a very simple uh, proof of it okay so we'll not go into it because we don't have time okay now let's uh, look at one example now here it is, here is bob bob first thing we said that we uh, bob has to choose p and q which are two very large size prime okay now here we are taking toy example so we are taking very small values of p and q which are both are prime but very small number so actual algorithm will 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 is only for demonstration right this is, we have taken a very small number now it becomes p into q of course you know if uh, mallory receives it she can easily find out factors right uh, that is 11 to 7 but if this number n is very large then she cannot do it all right so from this phi n is calculated which is p minus 1 q minus 1 so it becomes 6 into 10 60 from the 60 we can choose a co prime which is 37 which is e is equal to 37 now you can see that gcd of 37 and 60 is 1 okay all right so e is now 37 and n is equal to 77 so public key of bob becomes 77 comma 37 so this is n the one is e and now bob has to calculate the private key of d which is d so now e into d and then mod p minus 1 q minus 1 has to be 1 now e is 37 so 37 into d mod 60 has to be 1 so if you solve this, then you will get value of D is equal to 13. So basically you can see 13 into 37 mod 60 should be one. It's simple, right? So if you just calculate it and then divide it and you find remainder as one. Okay, now this becomes private key of bomb now alice wants to send a message very small message m is equal to 2 to bomb what does he do he takes up he looks he encrypts it using this formula so he, he creates a she creates a cipher text c so she will take m m is equal to 2 then e is a, is 37 it comes from public key then mod n n is equal to 77 mod also comes from public key and she calculates that c is equal to if you just solve this again you can use modular mathematics to solve it easily then answer is 51 now bob receives what bob receives only 51 okay bob doesn't receive any uh, uh, alice's public key or whatever it doesn't so bob receives 51 he uses this value of c 51 and raise it power with his own private key and his own private key is 13 do mod of that and answer is 2 which is same as the text which alice has sent okay this answer okay you can go through this example by yourself and get the answer right so in practice and should be at least 1024 but nowadays it is 20 Four eight or even four zero nine six bits. So it's very very p and so n is very very large, and as a result of that, given such a large number of one zero four zero nine six bits, that is computationally infeasible. So in general, p and q etc. will look much bigger than this is again a very small number that's shown here okay so the d will be this big uh, for, for i think this should be for 21024 e will look this big now these are all hex right 
hex number, hexadecimal number. So this, in fact, each one of these digit will correspond to four bits. Okay. So security, if you can factor from n, if you can find out p and q by factoring, then then you have one. It means that Mallory if can find out p and q given value of n, then she has won the game, right? But factoring is impossible. It's very very difficult. Okay. Okay. Right? So current best solution to factor is unknown. It's unknown, right? Right. So it, it so far people couldn't break RSA algorithm. Okay, because factoring problem is assumed to be hard. Okay. Is RSA encryption is IND CPA secure? No. Because it's deterministic in nature. There's no randomness at any point. So if you change the key every time. If Bob changes the key every time, then of course, uh, you know, uh, there is some randomness, right? Otherwise, it's non random. There's no randomness. So it's not IND CPU secure. And there are some, some, some ways available to uh, break it because attacker can guess plain text and compute cipher text. Because, you know, all, see, what, what do you do for encryption? Cipher text is available to, Say let's assume in between to Mallory. Okay, then Mallory can take uh, can generate say message say m dash, and then uses Bob's public key to encrypt this, and create c dash and compare c dash with c and keep on doing this. Okay, all right. So she can have a brute force attack. But if the key size is large, then this is very difficult for her to break. However, if message is from very small set, yes, no kind, then, then you know what, uh, you know, if some, most of the time, yes, no kind of answers are there, which is as a message. If message is yes, then encryption of that with Bob's key, public, public key, will result in cipher text. See, now this kind of simple yes or no kind of text even, Mallory can use and generate cipher text and possibly break it, okay? All right. Now RSA does not provide any integrity because Mallory can tamper with encrypted message because Mallory, see, what we are doing is that encrypting using uh, Bob's public key and which Mallory can also do. So Mallory can change the message. And one simple trick is that, suppose Alice sent encryption of M1 and M2, which is M raised power one raised power E or M2 raised power E. So what Mallory can do is that she can multiply these two and take mod of N. So this will be M1 into M2 raised power E mod N. So she gets some information. Another method is given here, right? Please go through it. Okay, to summarize, RS algorithm is widely used in practice, well standardized, is used mainly for key transport and for digital signatures, okay? It relies on integer factorization problem. Okay, long, if for long-term safety is advisable that we use uh, 2048 bits, uh, Okay, we, we take uh, longer keys. Okay, I don't know. Okay, all right. Now, disadvantage of public key encryption in comparison to symmetric key encryption. Now, we are talking in general about public key crypto. Calculations are two or three orders of magnitude slower. Okay. So mainly we can use it for very small size encryption because here the computation is very extensive, expensive. Okay, so, but we still use it uh, in SSL, IPsec, and many system based on public crypto. Keys are very long. 
you know for in order to achieve same order of security we are we in rsa will use 2048 bit size key in comparison to 128 bit size key in case of symmetric encryption that's in aes okay is based on of course unproven number theoretical assumptions so rsa algorithm works but if somebody is able to get come out with algorithm such that this factor can be known okay then uh, this algorithm will not work okay i don't know we call can call this uh, disadvantage but so far is working okay now what we have achieved now we have solved the key transport problem or we can uh, encrypt a small message send it to other party now in practice we are going to combine these two asymmetric asymmetric key encryption like rsa and symmetric key encryption like aes okay and that's called hybrid encryption okay all right then we know the answer for that because symmetric encryption is very fast but problem is that you cannot exchange keys assumption is key exchange has to be done securely which you can't do with symmetric encryption so we use asymmetric encryption like rsa or key transport and then once keys are available both end then we can use symmetric encryption right so now it's as simple as that we i'm showing you the pictures bob sends his public key to alice okay alice generates a symmetric key k using a random number generator or pseudo random number generator whatever and then alice encrypts this key k now this becomes message right this key k using public key of bob and gets symmetric cipher c cipher text c and c goes to other end so bob decrypts this using his private key and gets the key k now he, this key k is available at both ends it can be used for symmetric key encryption clear this is another example right same same thing we have shown pictorially here so please go through it okay now we we have studied symmetric encryption aes des modes of operation and all this we can achieve primarily symmetric encryption we achieve confidentiality then we studied hash function advantage of hash function is we can get integrity that also depends on threat model then we use hmac and mac then we can get integrity and authenticity okay and but no where we can achieve non repetition okay what is non repetition here even here in uh, in rsa we can't get non repetition rsa all we achieve is the confidentiality non repetition is means what if alice and bob can alice and bob can cheat each other right because there is no third party which is between two of them right but how do we achieve then non repetition there is a question okay so for that we use digital signatures now this is very 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 important technology we use it every day right when we do any transaction e transaction then we cannot do it without digital signatures right okay what is physical signature you i am sure you would have seen bank checks okay in bank check you sign at the bottom say i will sign my name or bob has signed his name bob what does it mean what does the signature signify anybody can two people sign as it is 
two people cannot sign, right? I mean, and this first thing, right? I mean, signature is unique. Now you have signed something on check. Suppose you give me a check of one thousand dollars, one thousand rupees. You sign on it, then you are liable to pay for that. If you don't pay, then possibly you will go to jail. If I take the check, which is the bounce back from bank to court, the court will agree with me that you have not paid me one thousand rupees. So now non-repetition can be achieved here. Okay. Now, can we use this technology in this in in uh, in digital world? Now, this sign of Bob can be easily copied, right? It's nothing but you know if you look at this pattern, it's nothing but bits, and this so I can always copy these bits into new document. And instead of one thousand, I will say you need to pay me ten thousand rupees. It's still it will valid. So we cannot just copy Bob sign. You know we cannot use this technology in digital transactions. Okay. So now what we do? Now we have to say that the this signature should depend on the contents of the document. Okay, so we have, so we'll look at the contents a message M, which can be which is very important message, and I don't want it to be tampered with, but is publicly available. It should be known to everyone, right? Okay, I am not trying to achieve confidentiality here, so this should be seen to everyone, and then I this con based on content of this message. I use signing algorithm and use my private key. So I have already generated, or Bob has, or whoever has already generated public key and private key. Now instead of using public key, as Alice was using public key to encrypt something that she wants to send to Bob, now Alice here has generated both public key and private key, PK Alice and SK Alice. So she will use her own public key here. Uh, I'm so sorry, private key here, secret key here to sign this contents and that becomes signature. So what will happen now? So this message M and the message and then signature C, which is equivalent to uh, encryption of uh, or maybe may, uh, encryption of um, M using SK Alice. This becomes signature, right? So this this goes to any one, say Bob. So Bob will look at now message M, but he has to verify that she is uh, it's actually Alice signature. What will he do? He will take this C and decrypt it using Alice's public key, PK Alice. And what will he will get as a result of that M? And he will compare received M with calculated M and get the answer. Okay, all right. So this is simple. So this is a digital signature, right? So now, of course, we'll come to this uh, use of that little later. So, okay, we'll, we we can look at the digital signature use. Then we'll look at how we can generate it more efficiently. Okay. So suppose there is a say any private any company uh, software vendor sends. Uh, software updates right periodically like in windows you get periodical updates right or all the patches you get okay now when he's sending this he will th this is a, a software update we can say message m okay and then sign this using his own public uh, private key sk vendor for example and then become signature 
okay he uses his pub, uh, private key secret private key and then clients receive it what clients can do they are going to verify the signature okay using a m and public key of vendor if both match then it's done is good it basically what they will receive m and they will receive the signature now they will decrypt it using public key of bob pk of vendor say and we receive and get some m dash if m dash matches with m is done okay now here there is a little trick that we have not shown yet now signature has to be small then message m okay so normally in this method if you use this simple uh, you know encrypt this directly encrypt the message directly you will get signature of the same size as the original message okay so normally we hash it and then sign sign it right okay all right so we will uh, look at all this in the next class i thought i should be able to cover it but it looks like uh, it will take time so we will start from here digital signature and we'll complete uh, our discussion of digital signature in the next class now i want to have just a minute 